hand. Grab your tea, grab your coffee, your notepad. It's gonna be a good one. What's new with you, Jeff? I'm gonna pick on you since you're the first one here. Not much. Hey, I got a question for you before we get rolling though, Marcus. What do you know, what do you know about the retargeting beta? Oh, that's a Steve question. He's kind of down for the count right now. Um, but I know it's it's so close. It's so close. So, um, are are there beta test are there beta testers that you guys are using right now before you go live? I believe so, but I'm not going to answer that question because that wouldn't be the most reliable one to answer. Send an okay. email to Stephen S T E P H E N at streettext.com, and okay. he'll tell you where he's at on it. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Yeah, no, I, I'm ex, I'm ex, I'm ex so excited for that. That's going to be awesome. That'll, no, that'll be huge. Hello, my peoples. Good day. How's everybody doing? Hey, brother, man. Hey, Helper. Hey. What's up, buddy? Nothing much. Nothing much. How's everybody doing? Mm. Awesome. Good. Awesome. Brandon, Sean, do you guys have co-host ability? Perfect. Sean, I'll make you one. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Double branded over there. I see that <laughs> hat and shirt. Good stuff. All right, guys, we'll give it a couple minutes as we get started here. You know, people like to come a little bit late. So we like to start with shares and wins generally before we get into any heavy topics. So if anybody has an exciting share or win, um, please share. That'd be so awesome. It's so encouraging for the community to hear. And you guys, it doesn't have to be, I got this appointment or, you know, I got the deal. Sometimes the share or win is, you know, you got a conversation started. You use Julie for the first time. I, I guess I won't share. I got an appointment again then. Well, no, I like that. I like it, Elmer, because <laughs> the, the whole point of this is that we get to learn from you and yeah, we want to know, so. like, so, so when you share this, by the way, uh -huh. Take us all the way through it all, like from the top to the bottom. Take us for, through the ad you were using, yeah. the, the way the conversation started, Definitely. you know, taxes, phone calls, all of it. We want to hear any automations that helped you along the way. Yeah, for sure. So this one here, it, it, this one happened so quick right before my eyes. And guess who came through for me again? My assistant, Julie. Julie came through for me again. Uh, it was an, I was using the, uh, if you were to guess. If you were to get uh, an offer on your home, would you sell it? Would you like to know what your home value is in this market ad? That ad, uh, a gentleman filled out all his information and uh, and Julie sent them a message right away uh, asking, hey, there, if there is things that uh, you've done to your home that might change the value of your home, please let us know. He said, uh, call me. That's all he said, call me. I called them right away and I actually have a listing appointment at two o'clock here today. It's uh, and the reason why he wanted me to call him is because it's a pretty unique situation. It's a uh, 37 acres with a barn dominium and it has an event hall in the back. So uh, yeah, that's my win through Julie. And the appointment is today at two. Good luck. You got this. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well then anyone have any questions for Elmer? And then we can go to Kelly, but any, any specific questions for Elmer in that follow-up process? Cool. Pretty straightforward. Julie rocks. Kelly, go for it. Hey, so I um, booked my first appointment from a street text lead and she's not quite ready to sell yet, but it was my first physical in-person appointment. So that was really exciting. Well, tell us a little bit more about it. How did it happen? Um, well, so what I've been doing, if it's somebody in my town that I want to target and I get like a email lead, I go and I print off the CMA and drop it off on their porch. And so, um, well, I try and ring the doorbell and if they're home, but usually they're not. So 
I dropped it off. And then a couple of days later, she called me back and um, we just started the conversation and got an appointment. Awesome. That's so cool. Any questions for Kelly on her follow-up? My question is to both of them. Are you guys running the standard or did you guys tweak anything inside your um, Julie platform? I haven't tweaked Julie at all. Um, I've gone in and tweaked some of the emails just a little bit, not not a whole lot. Um, so everything's pretty much the same there, just a couple words, I guess. Yeah, same thing for me. I haven't really tweaked Julie. What I have tweaked is the verbiage, like she says, on on uh, on what she sends out, and then I added also my uh, contact information after every message Julie sends. I add my information at the bottom, quick email, phone number, and then uh, I added, feel free to call or text. That's all about it, so. Awesome. You guys, one of the things I always recommend, and you know, a lot of people forget to do this, some people do it well, is whenever you launch an ad, especially this nine month long drip campaign with the text messages and the email drip, give yourself the permission to launch it pause it for a second and then go through the funnel yourself and put yourself through it and share that because you can call you can share that link with with a bunch of people that that you know and say do me a favor put in your home address and your email um go through this i have i want wanted to get your your feedback on this um and so have them go through that experience from the email side from the text message side and then as you're doing that ask yourself you know the the, the question and and it's come from empathy is like, would I respond to this? Would this create a conversation? You know, because if I always look at that Julie one and I say, IE updates, I'm like, does people even say that? IE updates? Probably not. And so much of that has to change from the beginning. The Julie, the way you talk, I've seen Wendy do a really good job of that, you know, where she uses the words that she used amazing and awesome and all these things that she, that she only would say because that's who she is. And that's the way you want to position your Julie text as well. But your email, just as much. Because that, that email is, is pretty boring and generic until you go in there and make it your own. Linnea has done a really good job of that too. So again, read it out loud to yourself, and, and re, especially the first pieces of communication come out, coming out, and then ask yourself, is this my personality? Are these the questions I would ask? Would I respond if I were getting this email? And, I didn't, and all I thought I was getting was an instant market value from clicking on that ad or this list or whatever ad you're running. Because that's the key, it's that connection moment. That is your opportunity to shine. It's the opportunity to be unique and different and ask questions that most people don't ask. Make sense? Cool. Josh, what's up, buddy? You got to unmute, unmute yourself there. A win. So um, seller, home value add, a uh, slight tweak on one of the ones in there with just a map, the actual map, like the... Uh, the satellite view map, if we could bring you a strong cash offer that would also allow to move whenever you're ready, would you sell your, and then some emojis home, find out the value, the cash value in today's hot market, uh, a comment, yes, I'll sell. And then tells me like where the property is uh, and some additional information. And she and I have been going back and forth and I will likely have appointment an appointment uh, with her later this week. Doesn't happen often, but every once in a while, I don't know, just, Literally in the comment. Yes. That that's the beauty, right? It's like every once in a while you get the handoff and you go 90 yards down like that Bo Jackson run down the line. Majority of these people you gotta nurture. But there's always the exception. Random Bo Jackson reference from Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always remember I that have, run. <laughs> I have one, well actually three. My Alabama office just put three um buyers on the contract through street checks thanks to ira and josh who introduced me to street, uh, street, street techs <laughs> and i've done quite a bit in the georgia office both buying and selling side awesome sharon so do you want to tell us a little bit more like how how does that follow-up work do you have systems in place uh do you have a uh, agents working on your behalf? Is it you picking up the phone and making the call? How does that work for you? We have an internal association associate that he makes a lot of the calls and then sometimes I charm in. And then 
from last week's um, session, I linked up with Wayne from, uh, is it Smart Auto? So that's an, another avenue that we're using to help with the um, lead funneling. So hopefully that will help us. And um, we just take it from there. I know that the ladies uh, in Alabama, they're constantly working because their market is a little different from Georgia. So they have more inventory opposed to Georgia, but yet they're seeing a multiple offer scenario, a lot of multiple offer scenarios that's happening there. But um, so far they're doing pretty good. It took a while. And now that they are having some success under their belt, it's giving them more avenue or more motivation to move forward and say, hey, we can do this. We just have to be consistent and then see our conversion rate starts going up. Well done. Yeah, it's unique from market to market, right? I think right now it's 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 going to be different in Washington in the way you follow up versus Alabama, right? I think some markets are, are just so unique and different. And now I, I'm just curious for all your representation here. Let us know where you're from, too, in the comments, too, so we can get uh, a good idea of your market and what that market is like. Um, because I, I feel like it's it's just it's so unique from place to place. I know here in, in in Canada, in our area on Vancouver Island, it's kind of it's slowing down ever so slightly, but it's more about strategically pricing. You won't see multiple offers as much, but interest rates are slowly climbing and strategically pricing. I know that's that's here. I don't know what it's like there. In the Metro Atlanta area of Georgia, it is crazy. I it's it's just insane how you're finding a lot of multiple offers, especially with investors that have cash and, you know, cash is king. And then conventional FHA is just getting beaten up left and right. Whereas in the Alabama area, they are more inclined to accept the FHA because they don't have as much cash buyers as we do here. They have more VA and FHA or the USDA program. And then when you go to Florida now, <laughs> Florida is all over the place. The uh, Bay County area, which is the Gulf of Mexico, that in itself is, you don't know what you're getting. You just have to throw everything at the wall and hopefully some stick and some won't. But in Georgia, it's crazy. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Sharon. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Sharon. Uh, Cynthia. Hey, I'm new to street tech, so I'm learning all the systems. Uh, I thought there was a way to, and I don't know how to do it, so maybe you could tell me, or if I, there's not a way, on the ads to engage with people. So um, if people are making comments on the Facebook ad, is there a way to... Oh, absolutely. How so do I see that? You go to your, so you go to street tech, log into the dashboard, and then okay. you go to ads, Okay. and then you go to view your ad. Oh, Okay. And that will show me what it's doing on Facebook. And That's then right. I can engage with people and see if there's any haters. <laughs> and and uh, trust me, um, there will always be those trolls and, sure. and negative Nellies. And you can kind of, I, I like to have fun with them and throw gifts at them and videos at them every once in a while. Because you can actually respond with video like, hey, this is a real person. I'm here to help you. But yeah. what you'll find is I have actually seen a couple ads now. One of the longest lasting ads that I've seen has been on since 2020. And it's 2022 now, obviously. Wow. And um, and I'm, I'm like, I'm astonished. There's hundreds of comments on it, th three, four hundred social likes. So you, if you have systems in places and processes in place, and you've kind of found this stride in your ads performance, especially if it's gotten social interaction, that is one of the best things you can do to keep that ad going for life. Okay. A lot of people they're always chasing the lowest cost lead, and they're they're turning on and off and split testing and A/B testing. But you know, eventually you're gonna, you could find an ad that can last you a long time. And, and especially if you're interacting with that social. That's fabulous, thanks. Yeah. If you, uh, if you have a lot of ads running, if you use the Facebook, the business suite app, uh, and you go to the little talking bubble, you can see all the comments from all of your, it will include ads, but any of your Facebook posts and you kind of get it all in one, one view. Um, 
I mean, if you only have a couple of ads running, it's pretty easy to do Marcus's, but if you have a bunch of them, it can get a little bit cumbersome to keep clicking over. Whereas you can just check in on that once a day and, oh, you know, here's the trolls that I need to delete and here's the ones that I need to like and respond to. Hey, so, Josh, okay. you want to throw that into your course? <laughs> what is sure. the, um, what, is it Facebook Business Suite app? Because I don't even know what that is. Y yeah, so I think it's just called the Business Suite app now. Um, at least that's what the, the, like, the title of it when you have it down. Right here, guys. It's right here, look. Uh, uh, it looks like this little blue, you see this little blue icon right there? Yeah. Okay, it is yeah. called the Business Suite, though. You're, you're right, Josh. And I'll, okay. the, uh, the I'll copy blue, your, I think I got blue right your, there. There's the link in the chat. Yeah. And then you have to just link up your Facebook account. And then if you have multiple pages, you have to choose the right, you know, Facebook business page, but then you can manage uh, your Facebook, your Facebook business messenger and your comments and all of your so forth. I also did, I did a quick tutorial. Um, on this that I posted into the group a couple of weeks ago from that same, in that same app. And now it's downloading because I'm updating. Well, maybe I'll come back to that, but there's an easy way that you can invite everybody who's engaged with your posts. Um, if they've liked, okay, it's coming back up. If you go just to your, this is just like when you open the app and you go to your business page and you scroll down some, well, I don't have anybody to invite right now, but right where, right in this area where it's see trends, see audiences, invite friends. If people have like clicked like on one of your ads or hearted one of your ads, whatever, you can mass invite them to come like your page. And the more people, you know, the more fans of your page, I think the better, you know, the better uh, engagement and, you know, the better your ads perform, et cetera. Awesome. Shares, wins, guys. Keep the ball rolling or just, you know, interesting discoveries um, about street tax and new technologies that you're learning. Feel free to share. I got one quick one I'll throw in there. Um, you know, we always sit there and I say people come in and they'll throw their, their backup emails and stuff in there. And I, I go in and I still look people up and I was stalking a phone number. And I got the wife's phone number instead of the guy's phone number that I had sent something out to. I called left a message. So I get a call back from the, the husband, though, about a house. And he's like, well, no, we're not really thinking of selling right now. We're just going to wait. Last night, I get a call from, I get a text from the wife saying, oh, so would you have buyers for our home, this and that? So I'm texting back. And it's funny because I thought she was, someone else had been texting about a house. She was like, oh, no, no, this is Anna, this and that. So I said, oh, man, I am so sorry. So I called her to get the conversation going. She's like, well, could we sit down the next couple of weeks? The tenants are moving out. We're getting ready. So I started laughing about it. Like, you know, even mistakes work out. But the thing is, you know, when you sit here, if, you know, follow up is still the key and follow up isn't just returning an email out of out of the street tech system or whatever. Look them up, see what other numbers they have, because sometimes you just never know. So I'm trying to work an appointment from just stalking a phone number, as Marcus would say and um see where it goes but it's just once again the follow-up and looking to see what else i could find on them other than what they put inside the platform itself love it jackie so a question for you on the last page of the funnel it says this service is provided by and there's a photograph that is supposed to be there but it's not showing up and then it says my name and then it says round rock realtor and the brokerage i'm with um is there a way to edit that page jonathan you here mr whiting i am here oh. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe refresh me real quick i was just chatting to a team member here for a second she, okay. So the last page of the funnel of the home value funnel where the picture is, can she edit that? Cause she's not seeing her picture there. Um, yeah. Yes. yes. So and you can add You can edit the information about you. Like 
It says Round Rock Realtor. My husband went through my funnel. He was so kind to do that um, and bug me. He, <laughs> he said our home was worth at least $3 million. He's seen it on Zillow. So um, so it must be true. <laughs> but he was uh, sent me a screenshot of the last page. And it says Round Rock Realtor. And I don't specifically just work in Round Rock. So I wanted to change that part of it. Is that editable? Yeah, so also? if you go to your profile. You can actually change your business name and okay. the area that you serve. And um, and then just email me, um, John at Street Text, J-O-N at streettext.com, and then I'll connect with you and we can go through the the actual, like any other updates you want to do, but it's really easy and I'll show you how. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, again, remember, put yourself through that funnel. Always put yourself through the funnel. Experience both the funnel and the automations going out and continue to work off of those um, experiences and share those experiences just like Jackie did and her husband went through because you need to get that feedback. <clears throat> that's gonna be, that's their first experience of you. And if that experience doesn't feel authentic and genuine and speak your language, it's gonna feel very bodish or salesy otherwise. Um, so that's, that's a key thing. That's their first impression of you. Questions, Jeff, you got one. And then Latrice. I gotta unmute yourself there, buddy. Hey, real quick, Linnea did a great session this, earlier this morning about uh, changing market conditions in uh, your respective areas. And, and it was a good conversation, but I think more than that, it brought up the possibility for handling objections right now, um, especially with changing conditions. So I'm just kind of curious as to uh, what the consensus is with conditions in, in specific areas and how you're handling objections with buyers and rates and sellers and values. Love it. Linnea, unmute yourself too, because I missed that. I'd love to hear a little bit of what we missed. Um, <clears throat> can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, I'm on my, on my phone today. So. Um, so we just had a conversation about what's going on in the market. I mean, it's been shifting quite a bit here and I was talking through how I'm having to level set my expectations or my seller's expectations, because, you know, if we've talked to sellers that we're thinking about selling in January, I mean, they're selling now, it's not the same, uh, to expect, you know, uh, to price it high and get a hundred thousand dollars over asking price is not going to happen right now based on what we're seeing. Um, so the conversation was just more about like, how do you level set those expectations with your sellers? How do you properly price a home for this market for what's happening right now? What are all the different variable factors that could be impacting the way um, the market is starting to shift a little bit? And then talking about how it's shifting and depending on where you're at, it's really, it's really hitting the West hard and it's kind of moving out toward the East, east now. So that's really the conversation that we had. So cool. thanks Jeff for being there. It was awesome. Yeah, and Jeff's in the West, and I'm in the West. That's why we're all talking about this right mm -hmm. now. So, you know, it's yep. going to come to you. We're the trendsetters out here in the West. <laughs> 100%. Very true. So questions or anybody experiencing that right now? And yeah, what's as Jeff was saying, what, how are you handling those objections and how are you creating those conversations with your sellers? I just tell them that even though we're not going to have as many multiple offers, we're still going to have strong buyers. And some of the folks that go sadly that were already on the verge of where they were, the interest rates have bumped them out. But I tell them this is an encouragement to buyers to get off the fence because they're competing with less people. And so as long as they have a strong offer, they, they stand a better chance of getting their bids accepted. We're, we're like Linnea's man, 15, 20 minutes away um, from where I'm at. But I, I work the whole corridor from Seattle all the way down. And the thing is here, um, FHA and VA, VA is a strong market. They're still getting beat up a bit. More people are still bringing cash to the table. But I just tell the sellers, look, we're going to have strong offers still coming in. And the guys that are not having to compete against the other lower end driving prices up, it's a little bit of a relief, but we're still having strong offers. I'm getting fifty to 75000 over list price still and multiple offers. So I just tell them this is one of those things where I'm not going to bring you 15 or 20 offers, but I'm still going to bring in multiple offers. So I tell them, you know, here where we're at, Lenia knows this, it's a good time to sell all the time out here. We have traffic that rotates. We're not in like a mining town. We're not in an iron ore town. We're not in a farming community. 
We've got Boeing, Microsoft, the military's got several bases. We've got deep water ports. So what you do is you take a look at your area for the economics of what it is and see how that's going to impact what's going to go on. Because if it's something that affects the jobs or whatever, that, that's pretty big. But here in Seattle, Tacoma, around where we're at, you get a little hiccup from one, nothing shuts down. I mean, nothing. Because like I say, Microsoft, Boeing subcontractors, warehouser, large, largest lumber industry going. So we're, we're in a nice bubble where we're at because we're always going to have something moving forward. So the educational process is hold your seller's hands or explain to your buyers where they have less to compete against, but they still need to be strong for what they do. I think the other, the other side to that is also, you know, the education piece, Leon, is like telling my sellers, listen, you bought your house for $500,000 and we're going to sell it for $1.2 million less than five years later. So regardless of whether or not you're getting $100,000 over asking price or multiple, multiple offers, you're still making an incredible return on that investment. And so I think that like for me, it's a lot of bringing my sellers back to that, that piece of the conversation versus like, it's a crazy, crazy, crazy seller's market. Well, it's still a seller's market. It's always, it's still a seller's market. It's just not massively out of control. And quite frankly, it's actually easier and better for you, Mr. Seller, to not have 25 offers to deal with. So that's kind of what the um, conversation has been for me. Can I ask a question? Because I know with what we experience here in Georgia, one of the things that I do with my sellers is with multiple offers is that I put a clause in it. If, you, if you're offering 75, 100,000 over the asking price, you have to have that cash in case it doesn't get appraised because we don't wanna go back to the table if it doesn't get appraised. And then here we are fighting and wasting time. So I always put that clause there to make sure that you have that money just in case if it doesn't get appraised, and you have to show proof of funds that it's there. You have to show us the proof of funds because nobody wants to waste time because the longer the house stay on the market, especially when it comes back on the market as quote unquote, no fault of the seller, then it, it kind of have a, a little stigmatism and you could have gotten that sold and move on. Well, Sharon, just, just because they have the funds doesn't necessarily obligate them to using the funds to make up an appraisal discrepancy. Well, in the contract, yes, they do. If you put it in the contract, most definitely they have to do that because you're saying, listen, if I'm bidding, if I'm going 100,000 over the listed price and it doesn't get appraised, you're going to come to the table with that 100,000 because you're going so, to show so they're remo so they So they're removing the appraisal contingency is what you're saying. No, they're not removing it. They're just adding that verbiage in the special stipulation we do it all the time here because we're not yeah. going to back and wait for an appraisal to come back and it doesn't come back and then we back into a table negotiating the difference we're not going to do that so if you want to go a hundred thousand over that's sure but show us the proof that you have it just in case it doesn't get appraised for that hundred thousand yeah, we have a we have a clause here that they can add that in but you have to add it in the beginning I mean, exactly. you know, adding it in, adding it at the end is kind of weird, but if you add it in at the beginning, uh, yeah, we definitely have a clause, an appraisal gap clause for sure. The other thing on the front end of it is I let them know that, look, your folks are coming in above asking price. They're above my list. So at this point here, it, there's nothing wrong with asking for the proof of funds. And just let you know, I pick on everybody equally. Wendy, turn on your damn camera. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably getting her hair did somewhere. Latrice, I know you've been waiting patiently on this. I'm trying to get on the computer yeah, though, because I, I need my phone. Oh. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So sorry, okay, um, I am very, well, I'm not new to straight tech, but I turned it off for a little bit because when I turned it on, it was like, Whoo! and everything started coming. So now that I'm ready, I have my videos and everything ready. I just need a little bit of guidance and I, know I was trying to, I was having some internet connection issues, so you guys may have already answered this question, but I need to edit Julie for sure, because I definitely don't talk like Julie. Julie doesn't talk like me. Whoever <laughs> Julie is, I'm assuming that this is an automated system, and so I'm wondering if you could just tell me, you could just tell me really quick, um, I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time, where do I go to edit her? Yes, perfect. So we're talking about a seller ad, right? Yep. So you go to... You go to 
got two. It's weird because I only got two leads. It's like there's something wrong because when I turned it on before, there was like 20 of them. That well, came. yeah, well, now well like I would say I probably think. you need to start from scratch, you know, turn everything off and then uh, do a new split test using the What's Your Home Really Worth funnel. Put a nice image of that local area, um, you know, maybe get into the ad performance class and we can walk you through that. Then what you'd want to do as soon as you launch that split test, go to edit funnel and you go to your okay. ads you go to your ad section where you see those three okay. ads and then there's this edit funnel button and in that edit funnel button is all your email drip and sms sequences and you can go in there and make straight edits from there nice okay that's thank you so much and i'll look for that ad performance class yeah it's right in the as soon as you log into your dashboard it's right there on you can view all the classes i would do the ad performance review and maybe do the automations workshop too those would be two great ones that they can and help you get straight forward with that. Cool. Good question. Um, awesome. Yeah, keep keep this going, guys. Um, wins, shares, or anything that's relevant to the these questions that have been asked from Jeff and have the market shifting and changing. Um, whatever you guys want. Rebecca, I see your hand raised. Yeah, I just my comment. I just want to make a comment about setting uh, the seller expectations. I always tell people it's relevant. You know. Um, because, you know, sellers having to reduce their price and not getting into the market with all these crazy prices, they have to understand that it's relevant. It's across the board, you know, um, homes that they're going to, they're selling their home. Maybe, maybe it's a little bit less than what, what the market was, was last month. I'm in, I'm in California as well. I'm in central California, Pismo beach, San Luis Obispo area. And I always tell them it's relevant. You know, you're not getting maybe $3 million this week. Maybe it's, it's two, five. Okay. So I'm, you know, going up on the prices, I'm using big numbers, but the point is when they're buying, it's relevant because those homes aren't, aren't, going up like they were either so so when you do set expectations you, you you know that's a word that i like to use a lot is it's relevant the market is relevant it's across the board so um and i do that with buyers too you know just that's a good word to let them know that it's everywhere when when the market shifts it's not just shifting for them it's it's relevant to everybody Awesome, Rebecca. And by the way, Cal Poly graduate right here, San Luis Obispo. Uh, go get a Firestones tri-chip sandwich for me, okay? Because I missed that. I'm going to try to 805, make right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Good stuff, guys. Um, any questions, comments, anything particularly? Let's. You, you got 75 people here. They are all for you. So there's not a bad question because I'm sure that, that same question is resonating in the, in the back of the head somewhere. Um, so, Marcus, I, I, I just joined and I've got a question. I had to come out of an appointment. My ad cost went absolutely ballistic over the last week. I had to turn both a buyer and a seller ad off. My seller ad got up to like $70 a lead and my buyers jumped up to like $15 a lead. Is anybody else seeing that right now? And how long was that ad on, Campbell? It's been on for a while. It just, it just all of a sudden the cost went through the absolute roof. So I turned them both off. Okay, and did you go to view that ad and, and recognize if there was any negative feedback, comments on there that could have affected something? I'll go through it. How do I do that? Just dive into the ad itself? Yeah, you just go to the ad section, click view ad, and that would be, you know, something I would look at. Um, you know, as long, because you're, when you're looking at the last seven days versus the lifetime, as long as it's not too far off, um, you know, sometimes there are hiccups that you'll see just seasonal hiccups along the way but other times if you'll just have to to, to pause that and create a new split test and and you know things the other change thing, uh, yeah. the other thing that i would have you try campbell something that i've been noticing myself that's um uh, been very effective is you know how we're always talking about don't make budget adjustments of more than 25 percent uh, within a three-day period on a good yep. ad because then you run the risk of losing the algorithm well if the algorithm's been lost and the ad is is a, you know a, a good ad that's been running well for a long period of time. That's when I do recommend making a major change of more than twenty five percent. So if you're currently sitting at let's just say nine bucks a day, things have been good, but now in your last seven days column, your cost per email has climbed well above the acquisition cap, and your cost seventy bucks an email we're way off. Um, 
try decreasing your budget almost in half go from nine down to five bucks let it sit there for three days and what you'll find um, i'm finding it about 75 percent of the time um let it sit there for even even a little bit longer three four five days and you'll find your cost per email will come right back down to where you want it to be and then slowly dollar by dollar increase back up to that happy Got zone it. um and if so you want to go, help on that one go, go turn those ads back on again but reduce the budget and then see what happens over the next three to five days yeah and then if you'd like um what day is it today wednesday um yeah i mean I, i'm running the team ad class tomorrow if you want to jump on tomorrow's ads class um, i'd be happy to look through the ads with you a little bit and um it's just good you know uh, we always talk about the the cost per email is absolutely the the most important metric um the rest of the metrics become important when there's an issue because now what i'll be able to do, to do is is kind of comb through the rest of the stats with you show you what your cost um, should be show you kind of where how much your spend per day is and then kind of help you kind of you know, put that all to where it needs to be. So if you want to come. What time is that class tomorrow? Um, I believe. Let me go Google check. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, tomorrow's class is a 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. <coughs> okay. I'll take a look, see if I can get on that before o'clock my time. And you said, what's the name of that class? Uh, it's just Ad Help Performance and Review. Ad Help. Okay. I'll see if I can get signed up. Thank you, sir. How long yeah. have you had your ads turned off, Campbell? Uh, Leanna, I think it's probably been two days now, maybe three. You know, that, that can also help. This is, this is kind of what I do is I'll take it and I'll reduce them almost in half. And if that doesn't help, I reduce them again. If it still doesn't help, I drop them off and I let them sit off for like a week. And then I just turn it back on and then kind of do the same thing. So one way or the other, we'll be able to save it for you. I've had, um, you know, one ad that I've been playing with for another client of ours that has been running since the special housing ad category was first enacted. So we don't want to lose this ad. And it, I've seen it climb up to 20, 30 bucks a lead. And then we bring it back and get it down to four or five bucks a lead. And it stays there for months again. And then it gets is that, back. Is that more. Donna's ad? That's one of Donna's ads. Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, I've, that's the one I think I showcased in the My Best Ad contest. That's the um, picture of the courthouse in... The courthouse one, yeah. I mean, she's got like eight thousand dollars of ad spend on it, or something like that, since however long, and um, clearly doesn't want to lose the performance of that one. So, you know, look at it like you know, you're 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 reestablishing an ad that starts on rung four of the ladder because it's got all of this engagement. It has so many likes and shares and clicks and comments. Facebook loves that. So, um, let's try to save those ads whenever we can. Yeah, I'll share this. This is the one that Logan's talking about here. You can see over 102 comments, 23 shares. It's been on since July 3rd of 2020. So that's the ticket, I guess. So, Logan, I say this once again because this is a, this is this is an important subject. She's this this ad has gone up to 30 bucks a lead. This ad right here, but down to five. I mean, I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it as high as 42 once. Um, that was when I first took over. Fair enough. But so so what's so 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 where do we learn the strategy? especially if we had an ad that has this type of social interaction that we want to keep going um, and and we want this ad to continue. What do we learn this strategy of, because I want you to like take us through the steps and that might be a, a, a webinar in itself. Um, take us through the steps of how you, you start when you recognize like what Campbell's experiencing is going too high, but you really like that ad. Take us through that one, two, three step. Um, I would say it's easy. Um, if you set what you would consider the lead acquisition cap in your area. So let's say, Leon, you're in Seattle. Great. Median price is $600,000. we are going to set an acquisition cap somewhere 10, 12 bucks. So let's say 12 bucks is the absolute cap per email. I don't want to spend more than $12 an email. Okay, so now you're spending $14 an email. It's, it's, it's close and you want to save it, right? So what I would do is I'd start um, lowering the budget slightly. I wouldn't make the major budget sh shift because we want to keep it close to that. Now, all of a sudden, that is uh, you're up 15, 16, 17 bucks an email or more. Now we really want to shift the algorithm. Cut your budget in half. Simple. Let it sit there for three or four days. And then again, after you see your cost per email has finally come down, sometimes it has to sit longer than three or four days. Just let it sit there until you kind of see that cost per email come down and then slowly start adding back it, uh, up to the amount that you want, dollar by dollar, staying within that 25%. And if you guys want help with that, um, come to the ads classes. This is exactly what those, those daily ads classes are for. Um, but again, you know, just coming to these masterminds, this is kind of the, 
the, the first place to be. But uh, again, yeah, if you want a little bit more um, day to day help on managing the ads and understanding the stats, um, definitely come to those ads classes and we'll be able to help you kind of go through and, and um, make those decisions. You bet. And it's in your dashboard, guys, to register for those. And I just put the link there, the calendly.com forward slash street text. That'll show you all the classes available um, depending on what you're looking to, to get help with. That's good stuff. Awesome. Questions? I have a question. Where did you say we can find the stats for our ads? I, I either missed that or I didn't hear it. That's going to be if you just go straight in the dashboard, click on ads, you're going to see all your stats right there. Um, you'll see the stats. They'll, they'll be broken down into um, the last seven days and the lifetime of your of your stats. Okay. And then um, how do I, you were talking about sharing it with like a family member or a friend. How do I, I know it just randomly pops up, but is there a way to actually send them the ad to run them through the funnel? Um, completely. So um, I'll... Uh, I'll use someone's account right now and I'll, I'll show you. Okay. Just give me one second. Um, so when you go to view your ads, there's also a view link. The view link is associated especially to any seller ads that you have. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pull up that funnel starting with the address collection. And so that link, that view link is where you go to share. Um, and you can share that with everybody and anybody. You just click view link and then you just go to the, the URL command C is the way I do it on my computer it might be copy for you um, and then just paste that to all the people that you want and just with a you know a, a genuine message of why they should put their information through that does that make sense I'll show you um, yeah that makes sense I'll show you it so you can actually get a visual as soon as the, okay, the, okay. the account pulls up but yeah that's that's the key that's the ticket right there you always want to the view that link you want to view your ad you want to put yourself through that you want others to do the same um, yeah. let, let me show you, for example, like if I go to, I'm in Linnea's account right now and I just click view your ad, that'll take me to the actual ad. Now I, I can go through that, but if it's on currently on, I, I don't want to pay for that click. And I don't want to sh share that way, but you might share it cause you can share it in multiple ways. You might share it to as many people as you want. There's a share button. There's a share to your public. There's a share through messenger. You know, if you're going to send it in messenger, for example, the key is you write something there with that ad share like that you want because it's going to be personal to that person and you can share it to up to five people at a time and say hey you know do me a favor blah 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 right right there or yeah. another another way you can do it because you might want to see um you might want them to, to experience the entire ad and and what they think about it um but then you could also go into view link and then you just take that link potentially right just like that you do the copy of that link because this is the actual first click through that they see and you share that with people so there's a couple ways to do it um but yeah i would get very familiar with the view your ad the view link and then of course the edit funnel button takes you right into that funnel and this is this is where i encourage you all to look through this and understand it you you would you would get to know this stuff really well in the automations workshop with ira you would you would see okay first thing that sends off is an email to me that i've got a lead the next thing three minutes later and some of you have that delayed by you know zero 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 like it goes out immediately you can time delay this any way you want it's done in parallel and so what happens you can you can go in here and you can read it out loud to yourself and you can see how okay, is my email signature in place? Is my videos in place, et cetera, et cetera, right? And then you go down um, the way and the text messages are usually on the bottom. And this is where you start seeing Julie and you can start going in there and editing that Julie right there. Whether you want her time delayed, you can change that. There's a little hourglass. Um, so you can start seeing all this from that experience that they're gonna have and make edits and changes accordingly. Make sense? Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Do that. That's the, the, the first thing I recommend you do every time you launch an ad, you know, especially if you're you, the, the seller ads will always have the same automation. So you can run a equity ad. You can run if someone were to buy your home, would you sell an ad? You can run the what's your home with. They'll you'll never have to go and make multiple changes. But when you're running any other ad, the buyer's ad, the listing ads, custom ads, 
that's one of the first things I want you to do before you just let it go live is, is go see what they're about to get. Because that is their first impression of you. You know, make sure you have a nice email signature in there with everything that goes out. And that can be edited in the email signature. Make sure um, that that text that goes out feels like something you would have your assistant say. Make sure that email that goes out is something that you know that that's their first impression of you. Does it feel genuine? Does it feel like you're coming from value and contribution and education? Um, and is it authentically speaking your voice? And this is why we, we just emphasize all day long the power of video inside of these automations. Right. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and edit them right after the call. Do it. Love it. And Alyssa, I'm <laughs> glad I'm glad you said that. See, what one of the things, if you've been listening to the thing of the group, the way the world's been turning today, comes out to how many of us have not looked at our ads. And Campbell, I guess we'll blame you for this one. How many of us haven't looked at our ads, went back and tweaked it and whatever. And so if you haven't done a good assessment yet, number one, always know how much money you're spending. So it doesn't hurt to go look at your ad. If the will isn't broke, don't fix it. But there's been several classes mentioned today in here that could be signed up for. And, and most of us are in such a hurry for the instant results. We've ran an ad and that's it. We've done nothing else. So it's kind of amazing sometimes when you sit here. I shouldn't say amazing, but it, it's good to hear sometimes how many people come here and go, Street Tech says this, Street Tech says this, Street Tech says that. Um, because, and I laugh at this, when you first sign up, they, you go into the dashboard platform and it's got the thing telling you how to do some of these things and it's got the classes and you know, you're investing your money, but the biggest investment is your time. And if you haven't spent the time, that's why you're not getting the results. I, I get my best work done at midnight, seems like, because I'm up late getting things done. The phone's not ringing. But if nothing else, go in and take a look at what you have. And if nothing else, I jump in on classes all the time with Logan or I'll jump on stuff that um, Marcus has going on or whatever. Or I'll ask support questions because they get back to you. But you might want to sit down and take a look because... We're shifting towards summer. You're about to get another surge because as people's kids are getting out of school and all this and all that, if you have not looked at your ads to see what they're doing to get them ready for what's happening this summer, you'll be sitting back watching everyone else put soul on their signs and it won't be you. And I'm just, I'm being honest. I don't have to make it up. Y'all been in this business too long, so it's not a fairy tale. And, and I mean, we hit cycles of, of sorts and right now we're getting ready to hit another one. And if your ads ain't up, when these folks start looking, your ads ain't going to be seen. It's a great point, Leon. We, uh, you're talking about like just being able to see all the stuff that's in your dashboard. If you go to your dashboard here, like you just scroll down, you'll see the book a class button right there. That's where you can book into all those classes. You have our Street Text Academy. You can watch mastermind recordings, webinars. If you're traveling, you can just listen to it as a podcast. You don't need to be actually watching the screen. There's tons of videos that you can go back and watch here. And then when you click on the Street Text Help Center down here, it's the same thing as the question mark at the top here. But when you click here, I see so many people in the comments. How do I edit my automations? How do I add tags? This help center has been completely revamped. You see stuff in here about ads and funnels, automations and emails, contacts, what to do when you get a lead. And you just type up here, for example, tags, you'll see how to automate, add a buyer tag, how to automatically add a buyer tag, type in editing automations. You don't have to spell it right, but uh, you can type that in and you'll see how to view your automate, automated text and email campaigns. Want to learn how to add bomb bomb into your account? If this works, there we go. Type in bomb bomb. No, not many people use this help center. There is so much value in here that you can come in here. If you have a question, type it in. Keyword, how to agree with Homeboat. So use this help center. It's there for you to use. Bam. Back to the basics. Jackie. Um, first, I want to say, Leon, thank you for calling me on the carpet. Sometimes we need somebody to uh, tell it like it is. <laughs> Um, next, uh, with a single property ad, like if you're doing a, using street text to do, um, an ad with your listing, does it target the same people that your home value ad is showing it to, or is it a totally different audience? It would be a brand new audience. Okay. Yeah. It's always a brand new audience, you know, and this is why it's going to be so powerful with what Steven's working on with the retargeting. Cause you'll be able to take 
a lot yeah. of these audiences you already created and even import audiences that you already have. Get ready. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I know. I know. Steve, <laughs> where you at? Where you at, bro? Um, Isabel. Yes, I have a question. Um, my sister has an open house coming up this weekend, and I wanted to find out what ad would be appropriate to announce the open house. Open house ads. Anybody doing those? Custom ad. Custom ad. Yeah, the custom ad. I think it's the fourth one in your funnel template. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Yeah, and if there's anyone that's... The custom ad class today. Um, Logan does it later today and he can look at that with you. We also, it is in our list of ads to test. So I know some of our um, marketing department here is testing some open house ads or have it lined up to test. I've heard rumblings of it so that we can build out a template to work because it is requested frequently. Okay. Thanks, Ira. Good to see you. I also, I, bet, I, I know Wendy has her hand up, but uh, she's like, I'm next, Ira. But uh, <laughs> I did a little stats run yesterday and, and just goes to show this is in Marcus's area. I was curious, I was talking to somebody and his comment back was, oh, sure, I'd give a, a trial another shot. You know, if I get a listing, I'd sign up for sure. And I was like, well, your, your long-term mindset is not in place for this type of lead generation. Because if you're expecting a, a sign up out of a seven day trial, um, you, you just, you have to make sure you have a lucky horseshoe <laughs> somewhere because it's, that's not the way it works. Sometimes you luck out. So I was just trying to reiterate like, Hey, when you did your trial, you should go back and look at all the contacts that you got in that week. And you should like, see what happened to those addresses. So sent him the list of contacts he got in two week span. And then I decided, Hey, I'm just going to do it myself. I'm going to go and look up all these addresses. So here's a really powerful lesson for everybody. 82 addresses. He was running ads for two weeks. So 82 addresses, including his address only and his ones that submitted with name and phone number. I ran all of those addresses and added the 82 since that time, eight of them have been listed for the total of $7.9 million in sales. One of them is on the market right now for 1.6 million and the other one's pending just over a million dollars. So out of a two-week trial, eight of the addresses that were submitted have listed since the time that those leads were submitted on there. So that's only a two-week span of time. Some of them went up on the market about three to four months after um, they were entered into his lead forms. Some of them were a year later. Some of them are, are on the market right now. But it just goes to show you that you know, in your databases, there are addresses that are going to be listing and they're going to have signs on their front lawns. Whose name is going to be on that sign is going to be determined on who doesn't just so quickly slough away when the person right away doesn't want to talk to you. Like if, if you thought that you were going to get a conversation started through a Facebook ad, the instant the person clicked on your ad, then sometimes we just get deterred and we start like going after all the new leads, not realizing that the gold is actually in our old leads, that there's people in your funnel that are getting ready to list this spring, but they came into your funnel a year and a half ago. So what are you doing to start those conversations with those people again and get in front of the man? Cause now's the time, but it was just a powerful lesson on, you know, that's two weeks worth of leads. What if he had been running ads for a year? How many people in his database would be listing their houses this spring that he could be reaching out to right now? It's a very powerful lesson. So you should do it too. Go and look at all your addresses. And I know you can export them and import them into some tools to see like what happened to those addresses. And it'll kind of give you a kick in the butt to realize there's lots more serious people in there than you think. Awesome. That is right. amazing wisdom. Amazing wisdom. Wendy. Hey, how's it going? Hey, hey. Hey. I just wanted to share this super cool thing I'm kind of obsessed with. So um, uh, Linnea introduced me to uh, some pretty cool chicks, um, social media people, and they set me up on this Metricool. I'm pretty sure it is not 
free 99, but um, I don't know how much it is, but it's really cool because you can add like all your social media links and Google, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, like everything. And it analyzes everything. So like you can click on, oh my God, it's just kind of crazy, but you can see, um, you know, how many people viewed, what they viewed. I mean, kind of like ads manager, but it's like all in one place. And, um, and, and then you can see like the dark red in the calendar part is when my people from Facebook are, you know, very engaging, you know what I mean? So you don't want to post on the light day, you know, days you want to post in the dark color ones. So, I mean, it's just pretty cool. And you can answer all the comments and um, I mean, messages from all the platforms in one thing. How cool I love is that, that, right? I love that. Yeah, please share more. Yeah, that's, Metro that's like Cool. Could, um, Metro I'll cool. post a link in the That chat. sounds something like here at Street Text we could use too. Hey, John? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of like, oh, okay, let's see. Huh, this has happened here. Oh, this happened here. Oh, look, this is it. I mean, because, you know, you want to know, like you just said, you want to know what your ads are doing and how they're going. And um, anyway, so this is a pretty cool. By the way, I was okay. in your ad section yesterday, Wendy. I would say it's probably time to turn some off and keep some. Oh, on. I need to look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw and Wendy it's on my like, list today. Wendy had like had seven different ads going at the same time, all seller ads. I'm like, hey, that's pretty awesome. It's been a week. That's like that's pretty heavy budget. You're you're crushing. Um, good <laughs> I job. Know. I I usually look at it every Wednesday, so um, it's on my list today, but. I was in Metro Cool. So. Well, I just reminded you, Metro Cool, Metro Cool, yes. everybody, check it out. If, yes. you have a, if you have a link, send us. Put that link in the chat. Okay, perfect. I have a question. Yeah. Is there a way to put, you know, when you get a um, a response to your ad and they don't leave a um, an email, is there any way to put like a, if you don't leave your email, you won't get a report, little blurb in there somehow uh yeah, that, 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 like the editing the actual inside of the funnel yes i'm sure there yeah that's i who who wants to answer that is there a way ira logan john i think we've tried that before but it just i actually improved. responded in the comments because i was getting a bunch of them of, off one ad Oh, we don't want to give you our information. You're going to spam us, blah, blah, blah. And so one was feeding off another. And finally, I just put something out there. Well, great. If you don't want, you know, the information. So the next thing I know, I started getting all the information I needed. Yeah, I mean, the box right there is like when they put that in their address, it says email permission to be contacted, right? right. So that that's kind of saying if you want it. You got to give email permission. You got to click on the box. You got to submit the email. So it kind of weeds them out right there. Um, so the key is this is this is a proven solution. You know that has I don't know hundreds of thousands of test points to deliver these proven click to contact ratios. The, these home value funnels all around North America on any given day are sitting at sixty plus percent click to contact. Yeah. Right. So it's hard to beat that. And then naturally you can look at those funnels. This is where you want to actually look at those funnels, put your mouse over it and study the stats. The stats will reveal to you what the average of address to email submission is. And that's why this is how you look at your numbers. If you're seeing an average $2 address, for example, in the funnel, and then you see the Never. Six <laughs> well, I know I'm just saying like when you look at the, the aggregated data all across the world, right? And you yeah. see for the 10,000 people using this particular funnel, it's averaging a $2 address and let's just say like a $6 email. Well, it, it automatically tells you that one in three of those addresses on average submit their email, right? Okay. So you can see how those, how those parallels work. This is why you do need to figure out what are you gonna do with these address onlys as I already just talked about. Um, and there are some so many good conversations. Just type in address only in our group on our Street Text Insider group. Okay. Because there's so many things you can do. And there's so many great automations and technologies now that does really like thank you iOS and does really nice things that you can send on the mail. Those things are way better than just randomly flooding and mailing people with stuff. 
now you know you have actual people that have raised their hand these are actual people that you are going to spend a little bit more on that mailer to make an impression on uh, thank you yeah um yeah brandon just put a link there for address only examples but if you were just to go to the so one of my favorite places in the insider group is let's see if where i am at here go to facebook Okay, so if you go into the Street Text Insider community, <clears throat> and then there's a section topics right there on the top, and then you just look at all these topics, there's one that's right there that says address only examples. The, these are the ones that have been hashtagged, and you can go and review. There's one you right there, what the, what the latest conversations are. Um, another thing to do is just go to search and just type in whatever that, as uh, Brandon was talking about, both in your dashboard and in here, address only. Uh, this is one of Donna's old ones that is still popular to this day. It's um, that you, she used to send. So there's a lot of great talks about different things that you can do. And if you have a good one that you're working right now for address only, please share it in this community um, so we can all learn from you. Awesome. Cool, guys. Well, we're at the top of the hour, but this is kind of, you know, bonus time for you. So feel free to, you know, still got 65 of you here. This is what I love about this mastermind. Um, feel free to unmute yourself and just continue. Like, we're here for you as long as you need. So unmute yourself, ask the questions, comments, anything that you'd like to share, wins. Um, I know Steve, if Steve, you still doing that Canada mastermind there, buddy? No. <laughs> okay, then no longer. So don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, this is... Joe, Joe, do you have something you wanted to add? Actually, Marcus, um, I was by myself for the last two masterminds, so I figured uh, nobody's nobody's really into it on the Canadian side. So I'll just uh, I'll just post some stuff and stuff. Well, you know, what you want to do with that, Steve? Go into the insider community with the, all the Canadians you already know in the group. Tag them all, yeah. um, and then um, just figure out who is in Canada in the group. And then see what you can do to, to create um, some sort of, of mini group through that, right? I would go and see. I would go and see how many people are actually, and I'm sure we can help you with that here at Street Text. Figure out how many Canadian yeah, clients. I was, I was looking at the the stuff that you guys have in like um, for Homebot, whatever. Um, we have a Home Beat, yeah. Right. So maybe I'll add something on how to coordinate that into the into the FAQs on on your site. Yeah, yeah, no, seriously, we'll, we'll work with you on that. Whoever wants to take the lead, let's figure out how many people we have here on Street Text. I know we have a bunch in Canada, um, and then we can figure out something where we can create an event just for Canadians. I would also start maybe once a month, because, I mean, you know, everybody gets so, I won't say overwhelmed, but so much going on and stuff like that, that start out once a month and then let a group grow rather than try to do it every week. You'll probably find you have a better attendance because they can plan that much further ahead. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about that as well. Good stuff. I just had someone in there. I, I would join a Canadian mastermind. That's Scott Weber. So um, you guys just all coordinate. Renee said I would I join one too. Renee Haney. So there's a couple people right off the bat right there for you. Go in that chat feature and start connecting on Facebook. Create the Facebook group chat. It's the easiest way. Line everybody in one. Joe, you have a question? Joe Stevenson, I know you got to unmute yourself, or you, we just got to look. Hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I was wondering how well is Callingly working for people? Is that a is that a good idea to get? Callingly, um, I don't know who's using Callingly out there. I, I've I've brought it up a couple of times, but I I know people love it if they're using it. I just haven't heard too much feedback on people in this group using it. Anyone using Callingly, the service? Not Calendly, not the account, the booking engine, but Callingly. They do have a free trial, so it's worth checking. And then I'm going to be talking to, with someone um, from Smart Alto too, and uh, we'll try to bring that to you guys too to, to see if that could complement you um, for a service. You're going to bring Hassan in, I take it then? Yes, yes. I, I'm that would need... be good because that's, that's the service that I was going to look into as well. So yeah. if you get something on with them, that'll be awesome. 
You bet. I'm, I'm meeting with him Friday, I believe. And by the way, if there if there are certain people you want me to meet up with, because that's the the division I'm heading up right now is the strategic partnership. So if there are people or technologies or integrations you want me to go find for Street Text, hook me up. Send me a message. I'd love to meet them. And you know, sometimes the, the best way to save money is to ask a question. A lot of times it gets lost here in the mastermind, but post it in the insider group. That way it stays there for a while and someone's going to chime in because rather than get locked into, and, and I say it like this, even though I'm, I always say I'm free 99 all day long, your time is still worth something. And, and rather than find something where you spend 60 or 90 days and end it with a bad experience or, or whatever, if you, if you ask a question inside a group, it, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, someone in this group has done it or worked with it or is working with it. And, you know, you jump to the head of the class when you have somebody that can tell you what they did with it, um, save you the, the part, the pitfalls where you miss something or fall down on it. And, and it gets you going much quicker because the idea behind anything, I don't care if it's 30 day trial, two week trial, I want to get the most out of it in the shortest period of time. So just, you know, to, to speak up inside the group, get the hints and clues from everybody else, because I've never seen no one that won't share in this group and uh, get a good experience out of it, not an indifferent or bad one. Yeah. And let me let me add to that, because a lot of people, when they share, they don't share it the right way and then they don't get the answers. There is a strategy and technique that will get you feedback immediately. And let me share that with you. OK, so. You know, I've, I've, I've been doing it for a while now. I don't know, I'll tell you. You go in there, and when you go to, to, to create that discussion, there's this little picture, uh, little deal here, and you can pick a color, okay? And so you can use your avatar. So if you haven't created one, go create one. Or you can go in there, let's just say you use a color that, sh that stands out. Now, if you write too much text, it won't let you, the color will disappear, and that means that's too wordy, right? Unless you have something here. But if I said, uh, KV Core, for example, right? Who uses who uses it? Now, what you'd want to do to get people to respond to this is go to this little tag people button and just go to school. Tag as many po possible people as you can. Like start with the letter A and just ta tag everybody that that you know or that has the option of letter A, and then just go down the alphabet down the list and just get up to as many people as you possibly can, and then post. Because now, especially the people you already know and you want to get feedback from, that's going to get you immediate discussion. Did you learn t something from that today? Because that's the key. You want, you want this group to be all about collaboration and getting you feedback. Go in there, post something, tag as many people as you possibly can, ask a simple, easy, direct question, and watch. It'll create this massive discussion underneath it. Cool. Promise you, go do it right now. Test it. <laughs> Test it out. All right. Um, cool, guys. Any other anything anything else before we let you go? It's uh, down to forty three, so we're watching them kind of slowly drop. But you st there's still plenty of you here. If you have any questions, go Raiders. Go Raiders. That's right. Derek Carr is our QB. Yeah, Jonathan, I guess I asked this to you. So is the beta retargeting really, really getting closer? It is. It is getting closer. Are you on it? Yep, that's why I'm asking. Yes. <laughs> it's it's uh, uh, it's very exciting. I think the um, we have some pretty exciting ideas around where we want to go with the uh, ad delivery and the retargeting and then starting to bring on some other platforms too to it. So it's uh, very, it's a very big project that we're pushing as hard as we can on our end. And yeah, so stay in the loop, stay close and it's exciting. And then there's some cool stuff we can do right now with automations too, which is also part of it. So um, very, very cool thing. So being able to, like being able to import your contacts uh, externally, but then actually triggering automations or like re-engagement automations to it while they're going through the retargeting campaigns. So we're able to, because it's all retargeting, right? It doesn't really matter whether you're communicating with them in email or communicating with them just by seeing the ad in their newsfeed. We're just wanting to stay in top of mind. And really, as you were saying earlier today in the mastermind, prepare for the search. 
So create the demand, create your own demand and, uh, and really drive that growth engine. And I think retargeting is a huge part of that. So we're very excited for it. Yes, there's a lot of neat things happening. Um, okay, guys, thank you so much for your attendance. Remember, don't try to do everything. Do that one thing that really stuck out to you today and make it happen. If you just pull that one thing, you know, every week you're adding in four, four new things or every month with, with these masterminds. And if you want to add in more than that, just wait for a couple hours. It'll be uploaded to YouTube. Sit back, go back, you know, and, and watch that, that thing that you want to go and, and do take some notes and you can add in another gold nugget. But there's so many nuggets dropped in these things. Sometimes we get overwhelmed. Just pick that one thing. Cool. And I want to see more of you post in the group. Post discussions, tag people, ask the question, because you can get immediate response just by tagging 99 people. <laughs> Seriously. That's what I do. You guys, I'm, I'm trying to show you as I lead that group. I, t I tag you a lot. I tag Jeff and Lee, and I'm looking at Wendy here. I tag you purposely. And we feel really special, too. You are. You're super special. <laughs> well, I, I need to get started getting tagged, too, then. because I'll, I'll, I'll tag know. you, buddy. There you Make go. sure we're connected on Facebook. There you go. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, guys. See you at the next Mastermind.